Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be covering another chapter in the Scandal of Scientology by Paulette Cooper. Last time we covered chapter 6, the Org, and today we're going to be covering chapter 7, the Sea Org. So stay tuned and find out what is in chapter 7. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So like I said in the introduction, we're going to be covering chapter 7 of The Scandal of Scientology by Paulette Cooper. So if you like this type of content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and ring that bell so that you're notified every single time I upload a video. Now to dive into chapter 7, The Sea Org. Wouldn't be Scientology without a quote, so... L. Ron Hubbard, flanked by the powerful, highly trained OT of the Sea Org, has forged through gigantic barriers, has identified the true enemy of mankind on this planet. And that comes from a Scientology mailing piece, and like we've covered previously, you usually get on that mailing list either by going into an org yourself, but there's also always the possibility that someone you know has put you on the mailing list. Hubbard himself is never at any of these home orgs anymore. He now lives on the mysterious Sea Org, a trio of secret ships that sails the Mediterranean. Hubbard lives on the flagship, the Royal Scotsman, also called the Apollo. A 3,330-ton, 3 320-foot converted Irish cattle ferry with LRH, L. Ron Hubbard, floridly painted on the funnel. LRH, or Hubbard, has the title of Commodore and has a beautiful 22-year-old beautiful daughter, Diana, who is also on board has been given the unlikely title of Lieutenant Commodore. Along with them are Hubbard's present wife, four of his seven children from his three marriages, his dog, and two cars. In addition, the Sea Org is a training fleet for at least 200 white uniform Scientologists and their children who range in age from six months to, seven, uh, to 60 years. Okay. So we're going to stop right there. Now, remember, this book was written in the prime time of Scientology. So this is when the Apollo was still selling and they had everybody on board. And this was also the time where people who had children who were a part of the Sea Org, their children were also a part of the Sea Org. They didn't get a chance to decide whether or not to sign that billion dollar contract. They were just automatically drafted in. So you had adults and children, men and women, all together on this boat. Anybody else see where there's room for a problem? With the exception of the children, the rest are said to have signed a billion year contract with Hubbard, presumably to include their Thetans in future lives, to help him help the world. To accomplish this goal, Scientologists not only work for Hubbard's gratis, but it appears that they may even pay to be on the boat. As many of them there are in training to become Operating Thetan 8, the highest level in Scientology, and to reach the level costs a few thousand dollars more than it does to become a clear. Their dedication is reflected not only financially, Sea Org Scientologists work a difficult eight hour day and spend their evening studying Scientology. Even the children on board work for Scientology as messengers. So that is how everything started, was if you were in the Sea Org, you were pushing to be OT8. And even now, there are still only eight OT levels, even though there were supposed to be like 40 of them. Hubbard never completed all of the OT levels. 
for training before he passed. And every so often, Miscavige will dangle that carrot in front of everybody saying, oh, OT9 and OT10 are coming soon. But he's been saying that since the 80s. And it's 2020. So I think you might as well just hang that one up. But also, let's go back to this. They are working for free. They are not getting any money. They are working eight-hour days. They are sailing a ship. They are doing whatever they do on board. And they're not getting any money. That still happens to be a form of an issue today. While, yes, they get paid, they get paid a pittance. Some of these people that were in Scientology for 15, 20 years, over that 15 or 20 years, only netted like $20,000, maybe $30,000 in 15 to 20 years. So they're not getting paid much of anything. On top of that, you not only have the parents working, but these children who had no say in whether they were on board or not are also working. Life on board is hard and punishment is strict. It is said that someone might be an officer one day and for punishment be sent to swab the decks the next. The London Sunday Times carried an item about a wealthy California man who was wearing an officer's uniform when he first arrived at the Sea Org, but for being late, he was given dirty blue overalls and made to work in the galleys. Although it's hard to figure out why any country would complain about a ship full of hardworking people at their ports, at least one country was sufficiently displeased with them to kick them out of the harbor on 24 hour notice. In Corfu, Greece, where the Scientologists were said to be spending about $1,500 a day for provisions and boat repairs, it would seem that the government had little to complain about. But after seven months there, the Minister of the Interior kicked them out. He gave no reason except that they were declared undesirable. Now, that may seem extreme. But you also have to think, what's the mission of a Scientologist? The mission of a Scientologist is to recruit other Scientologists. So they're in this port for seven months. Yes, they're spending money in the country, and that's a great thing, but then they're also attempting to recruit their citizens. The country may have been displeased with the strange behavior of those living on the Sea Org, Local people complained about seeing Scientology children of eight or nine years old being made to walk the plank into the Asian. And one Scientologist publication depicts a similar punishment that was met, meted out to an older member. It is not known who saves them, but since Scientologists have jobs for everything, director of success, letter registrar, etc., maybe they have a rescue registrar. So, take into account what you just read. They made a child of like eight or nine years old walk the plank into the sea. And that's not the only time that has happened. There have been stories that have come out from time on the Apollo where people were made to jump from higher decks on the Apollo into the water as a punishment. What happens if you're not in safe waters? What happens if that person doesn't jump properly and hits their head on the way down? What happens if that person can't swim? Doesn't matter, it's your punishment, do it. On another occasion, locals reported that 24 Scientologists left the ship one day and marched half a mile along the quayside in military step. Wearing no raincoats despite the pouring rain, one outsider, Captain John Jones, 
reported to the London newspaper some of the things that happened while he was sailing with one of the similar ships. My crew were 16 men and four women who wouldn't know a trawler from a tram car, he allegedly stated. He complained that he was made to run the ship according to the Sea Org book and that electrical equipment other than lights, radio, and direction finder and other advanced equipment he had on board could not be used, probably because the Scientologists feared it would interfere, interfere with the functioning of their e-meters. He reported <clears throat> that, quote, using the org book navigation system based on radio beams from the BBC and other stations, we were soon hopelessly lost. Mystery surrounds the ship. Hubbard is also it is said to sleep during the day, rise at 6 p.m., and is almost never seen outside. Most of the people on the board, on the boat, English is not working for me today, on the boat, don't see him either, except for his personal staff and officers. The latter have met meetings with him upon written request. Outsiders are not even sure exactly where on the boat Hubbard lives, although one reporter suspected it was in the middle of the upper part of the deck where, quote, a corridor leads to what few cabins there are with a notice forbidding entry. It is said that most of the other people sleep in dormitory-like accommodations. Captain Jones, mentioned before, said that men and women on his ship shared the same quarters with only a blanket dividing the sections. So again, you have men and women on this boat but you have them all sleeping in the same area in dormitory-like situations, so obviously it's gonna be bunk beds. But there's only a sheet separating the men from the women, the boys from the girls. Anybody else see where there's a problem here? Hubbard also keeps the purpose of the ship well hidden, although he initially admitted that the Sea Org was established as a mobile headquarters for setting up new bases or correcting old ones, he now seems to want people to think they're all there for exploration, not Scientology. The stationery used by the ship is imprinted with, quote, the Hubbard Exploration Company, LTD. No address given. One spokesman for the ship said its purpose was, quote, basically to search for oil and gas in the Mediterranean and elsewhere. And in one communique, Hubbard stated the boat was in Greece, quote, to explore and study the decline of ancient civilizations and so learn how the, this current one is going. Hubbard has even denied interviewers, has denied to interviewers in the earlier days when he talked with them that the ship or he was connected to Scientology although Telex reports from St. Hill were directly in front of him. So what this is saying is like, at first it's supposed to be to expand Scientology all over the world and then it becomes an exploration. Why do you think it became an exploration? Because nobody wanted Scientology. By this time, Scientology was already getting a bad rap today's standards it was actually pretty decent but it was already starting to show the problems there were already cracks in its foundation and so to keep people from saying anything it became an exploration another mystery concerns linda hicks a very beautiful 22 year old british blonde who joined the sea org and then disappeared her father who had a heart condition claimed that this that his only daughter had initially became involved with Scientology and Las Palmas and that when he saw her afterwards, quote, she dyed her hair fair, dyed her, I can't read, she dyed her fair hair black. She was filthy and her mind seems to have gone off the rails. The News of the World, which printed the story, said that Linda allegedly sent the letter below to her boyfriend at home, saying she had been hypnotized on the Sea Org 
and had been married without consciousness, conscious consent to another Scientologist. Darling Oscar, so many terrible things have happened to me since I waved goodbye to you at Las Palmas. Oh my, oh why didn't you make me leave that boat, Oscar? Do you know what was happening to me? I honestly didn't know. But I feel sick for you in Los Palmos. Do you feel that way for me now? Was it holiday romance or will you always love me how I love you? Darling, what did those people do to me? They changed me. You saw it. Why didn't you make me leave? They make people's minds sick. They influenced me. They tried to make me change against you. I became sick and hysterical and they put me on one of those machines, probably the e-meter. Then someone talked for two hours to me. The news of the world reported a reference here to her marrying one of the boys on the boat. I can't remember very much about it except that after two days at home, I began to change back to the old mummy that you loved and started to remember things. They were evil. Oh my darling, what a terrible mistake I made. So, this girl is saying that she was hypnotized into marrying another Scientologist. Do I believe it was hypnosis? No, but I do believe it is part of the brainwashing. They don't want you associating with anybody who is not inside the religion or willing to be inside of the religion. They want you to focus on the people that are in. So, what better way than to brainwash you into believing that you no longer love the person you actually love, but you love the Scientologist over here who's a good upstanding Scientologist. After Linda's father saw this note, he went to the Sea Org with a News of the World reporter to try to locate his daughter, but neither were able to board the ship, reach Hubbard, or find Linda. A Scientologist on deck said that Linda had had a, quote, beautiful romance with a fourth mate on the 414-ton Sea Org trawler, the Avon River. The next day, the Scientologist the Scientologist allegedly issued a statement to the reporter saying that Linda's parents favored another suitor and insisted that their daughter leave her husband. They also stated that the parents wanted her removed and sent to a psychiatrist for electric shocks, a favorite accusation of the Scientologist, and that Linda, fearing kidnapping, left the ship and fled. They added that the parents, quote, detest Scientologists and try to use Scientology as an excuse to break up the marriage. What happens on the Sea Org may forever remain a mystery, since those on the ship stay for quite a while and have little or no contact with their family, friends, or anyone back home. One story did leak out, however, that adds to the intrigue. It suggests that although joining the Sea Org may be voluntary, leaving it may not always be. When one of the Sea Org ships was docked in Corfu, the London Times reported that a number of people on shore had seen a female Scientologist and her two children attempted to run off the boat, screaming, and, then, and they then saw her dragged back in by uniformed Scientologist on the ship before she could reach the roadway. The harbor master in Corfu, a friend of Scientology, said he saw, quote, no reason for an investigation. This is actually still going on today. You have people that have broken out of Scientology. There are numerous stories out there. There are numerous people who did it. I mean, every major Scientologist out there speaking against Scientology had to make an escape somehow. But you have to think it's a lot harder to get off of a ship than it is to get off someplace on land. And this woman found her way 
but the Scientologists weren't going to let her. Of course not, because if she's trying to run away, she's going to be saying things that happened on the ship are the reason why she's trying to run away. They don't want that information out there. So, the easiest way is to keep everybody on board. So, with that said, that's the end of Chapter 7. And the next time I'm going to be reading Chapter 8, of course, because, you know, 8 follows 7, just logic. But... I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of this Sea Org, this billion dollar contract, these punishments, and the inability for people to leave when they've just had enough? Also, what do you think about my theory on the brainwashing into marriage and how they keep people from communicating with those away from the ship? So, next time we're going to read Chapter 8, which is the British and Australian Orgs, and we'll see what that has to say compared to what we know now. But, like always, in the description box, there are four ways to support the channel, Patreon, PayPal, Minds, and Cash App. I will have this chapter linked down below, so if you guys want to go back and read over it, you are more than welcome to. And all of my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and email are down below. So, with all that said, guys, I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.